border walls work. And what we want is we want walls in strategic locations, which will then allow us to dictate where the um, narcotics are entering the country illegally. You're listening to Code Red with Secure America Now, the largest national security grassroots army. Hi, my name is Alan Roth, president of Secure America Now, and we have as our guest today, Brandon Judd, president of the National Border Control Council. And Brandon, in addition to representing the border control agents, is also a active member of the Border Control Unit. He goes out on patrol, and we'll get into that a bit later about what it's like to be a Border Control agent, especially on our southern border in Arizona, New Mexico, and that part of the United States. I would like to begin, Brandon, uh, by first welcoming you, and secondly, by asking you what I would consider a big question. The president has said that we have a national emergency at our border. Do you agree or do you agree with his critics who say that there is no emergency on our borders? As a matter of fact, they belittle the idea that there's even a problem. In 22 years in the Border Patrol, I can tell you that this is the worst that we've ever seen it. Um, I work in the in the busiest sectors uh, prior to um, uh, 2019, and uh, we've never seen – we didn't see back then what we're currently seeing now. Um, back in 2019 uh, – I'm sorry, back in the uh, early 2000s, late 90s, um, although we were making 1.5 um, million arrests per year, uh, we were arresting the same people over and over and over again. Um, so, you know, we, we were making a lot of arrests, but we were, but we were actually dealing with about 600,000 people because we were just arresting them um, day in and day out. Uh, right now, we're on pace to make about 900,000 arrests, but we're dealing with 900,000 people. So it's worse today than it was um, in the early 2000s, late 90s. Um, We absolutely are experiencing a crisis. And and frankly, um, everybody has been acknowledging that now, um, now that the the data and the facts are out. Uh, But the question now is, is this a humanitarian crisis or is this a border security crisis? And so you're going to have some that are going to try to paint this as a humanitarian crisis, when in reality, very little has changed in the countries where most people are coming from, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras, uh, very little has changed now than what it was back in 2017. So you have to say, well, then why are so many people uh, coming across the border if it's a humanitarian crisis? You have to question what they're telling you, and you have to look at the facts. And those facts, uh, from a conversation that I was privileged to have with you, include what you described or what you identified as migrant caravans that are actually put together um, and organized. And can you explain what is the vehicle that brings these people together, uh, these mass numbers of people to come to the American border? So we call them magnets or or drivers. There are certain magnets that draw people here to cross the border illegally. And the main magnet that we have is what we call the catch and release program. Uh, When somebody comes to the United States and they violate our laws, cross the borders illegally, all they do is claim asylum, uh, and based upon that asylum claim, we then release them into the United States pending a hearing down the road. Well, normally those hearings don't happen um, for two to five years, and the vast majority of these people don't show up to their hearings. They just disappear into what President Obama coined as the shadows of society. So we continue to add on to the 
illegal population in the United States year after year because they're gaming the, the system. They're, they know what the loopholes are, and that is the magnet. Knowing that all you have to do is cross the border illegally, claim asylum, and then you will be released into the United States, and then you can disappear and never show up to your court date. That's the catch and release magnet that exists, and that's what's drawing people here to, to cross our borders illegally. Can you explain to our listeners the role that cartels play in this process? When I started my career back in 1997, uh, we had a lot of uh, mom and pop smuggling organizations, uh, both narcotics and um, uh, human traffickers. Now, all criminality that takes place on the border is controlled by organized crime. There are no more mom and pop smuggling organizations. It's all controlled by these very violent, dangerous cartels. Um, what they do is they recruit people to come to the United States. They tell them, they give them the information of all you have to do is pay us, we'll get you to the border, you cross the border, and the United States government will release you into the United States. And so they're actively recruiting people, and they're not just recruiting people from Mexico, from, um, uh, the, uh, from Central America, um, like Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. They're, they're recruiting people from around the world, and we've, we've had an influx of people from Africa. We've had a, a huge influx influx of people from Cuba. Um, we arrest people from China. So most people think that all we do is arrest people from, uh, from Mexico and Central America, and that is as far as the, from the truth as could be possible. And these cartels, they play this role in this in going out and, and convincing people to pay them money for them to get them to our borders and to have them cross our borders illegally. Has there been any instances where people identified as being uh, in some way, shape, or form involved with terrorism being caught or crossing our borders? So uh, we wouldn't the, – the Border Patrol wouldn't know that. Um, we, we, we have absolutely arrested people from the Middle East. Um, I'm not aware of, of anybody that's ever been on the terrorist watch list that, is, that has been arrested. But let's be honest. If you're on the terrorist watch list, you're not going to be coming to the United States. You're going to be hiding out um, in Afghanistan, in Iran. You're going to be hiding out there. Um, we have absolutely arrested people from the Middle East that have crossed the border illegally. Now, the scary part about that is if somebody from the Middle East is crossing our borders illegally and trying to evade detection, then it's most likely that they're coming here for nefarious purposes. But when we, when we arrest somebody from the Middle East, we immediately turn them over to Homeland Security Investigations, um, and then they, they obviously contact the FBI and so on and so forth. Um, and what happens from there, the Border Patrol will never see, will never know. Our job is to take people into custody, they cross the border illegally, and then we turn them over to the proper authorities. Um, so that's the process that we play, but we absolutely um, arrest people um, trying to enter our country illegally from the Middle East. As a border control agent, as a representative of border control agents, what is it on a typical day that the border control agents of the United States of America do? What are your responsibilities? And uh, you had mentioned uh, in your previous answer that when you make certain arrests, you turn them over to other authorities. What is it? Where in the process do the border control agents sit? Um, and and I, I'm sorry, I'm going to correct you real quick. It's, it's border patrol, not border control. Um, but it's the same thing. I mean, we have to, we, we we control the border, but. Border Patrol agents, our role um, in the law enforcement process is to detect um, individuals, narcotics, or any other contraband that crosses the border illegally between ports of entry. So on the southwest border, 
or even on the northern border. Um, and New York is a is a state that that has a border with Canada. Um, we have uh, we have points of entry that where you can enter the country legally. Um, we don't work um, at the ports of entry. We work between the ports of entry, and our job is to detect and apprehend anything that enters the United States between the ports of entry that is illegal. When we take those individuals or contraband into custody, it's then our job um, to determine whether or not we're going to apply a, uh, a, a consequence or prosecute them for uh, violating the law. We then do all of the paperwork that is associated with that prosecution, and then we refer it to the United States Attorney's Office. And then the United States Attorney's Office, they then decide whether or not they're going to follow through on the prosecution. So our job is all of the upfront work. Um, we detect, we find, and we apprehend everything that crosses the border illegally. We then process it accordingly, and then we turn it over to the, uh, the other agencies that then play the other role in this law enforcement process, and oftentimes that's the United States Attorney's Office. Brandon, is it fair to say that uh, your people, you and the other Border Patrol agents, are the first line of defense in the immigration process? Well, we are the first line of defense. We're the first ones. Um, we're the ones that are working right on the border. We're the ones uh, that have to try to control and make sure all of these, these uh, persons and uh, potential contraband are not able to make it into the country without detection. Um, without us, you would have complete and total open borders, and anybody would be able to cross the border and bring anything into into our country. Um, our role is an extremely important role for the safety and security of the American people. Um, and again, without having border patrol agents out there, then our borders would be wide open, and anybody or anything would be able to enter the country. When I was looking at your website, and I, by your website, I meant your organization's website, which the address is bpunion.org, I saw a headline, and I would be appreciative if you would explain. The headline says, Border Control Agents Rescued 43 hundred and seven people in 2018. What does that mean? How did you rescue them? And what, what were you rescuing them from? So we, we find an awful lot of people that are, that are crossing the border that, that uh, fall under distress um, due to the harsh climates um, where we work. Um, when we're down on the southwest border uh, in, in the middle of the summer, um, the, the heat indexes are extremely high. Um, if you're in Texas, not only are you going to have heat, but you're also going to have humidity. And so these individuals, when they're traveling as far as they travel, um, they can come under um, extreme distress. Our job is also to find those individuals um, and save them so that they do not perish while they're in the border or uh, while they're crossing the border and they're, they're lost in the desert or um, when they're uh, crossing the Rio Grande River and they're in distress of drowning. Um, in fact, I, I, I get so upset um, when uh, people project their anger on Border Patrol agents because all they're doing is enforcing the laws that Congress passed um, because they don't like the laws or the policies, and they call us an awful lot of names. Um, I mean, we recently had a congresswoman that uh, compared um, our processing facilities to concentration camps, which is uh, completely and totally irresponsible, when in reality we risk our own lives to go out and save these people. And I would point you to James Epling back in, I believe it was 2004, um, when he went into the Colorado River um, near Yuma, Arizona, to try to save some people that were in distress, and he lost his life um, because he was trying to save other people. 
Those are the types of heroic um, Border Patrol agents that we have. They go out there and they risk their lives on a daily basis to um, not only uh, keep people from entering the country illegally and contraband from entering the country illegally, but to also ensure that um, life is preserved of those individuals who do cross our borders illegally. We at Secure America Now thank you for all that you and your team do because you are putting your lives at risk on a daily basis. And I'd like to ask you, in the United States, as we all know, we have had an ongoing dispute on whether the construction of a border wall would have an impact in stopping illegal immigration from coming into our country. Where do you come down on that question? Uh, I'm gonna give you some examples, and, and I believe that these examples, these facts, I think that they speak for themselves. Um, I transferred to the Tucson um, Border Patrol sector in 2002. Um, I went to what was called the NACO Border Patrol Station. That station was responsible for patrolling about 56 linear miles of border. Um, those 56 linear miles of border, uh, in, three, in three consecutive years, we arrested over 100,000. Uh, we made over 100,000 arrests in those, in those consecutive years, 20, 2003, 2004, 2005. Over 100,000 arrests is what we made in those three years. That was pre-walls. Um, then we built the walls, and those arrests went from uh, over 100,000 down to 15,000. Uh, the proof is in the pudding. Border walls work, and what we want is we want walls in strategic locations, which will then allow us to dictate where the um, narcotics are entering the country illegally. And if we can dictate where illegal entries and illegal contraband are coming into the United States, we can then be a lot more effective in our jobs. Walls work, they always have worked. Um, if they didn't work, Congress wouldn't have passed, and this was bipartisan, they wouldn't have passed the Secure Fence Act, um, which they, they did in fact pass. Um, but now, due to politics, you're having a lot of people say that, that walls are medieval, that they don't work, um, that there's a lot of other things that we can do, when in reality, uh, some of the best technology is the older technology that has worked in the past. You know, walls are used, I know, for example, in the state of Israel, when they put up security walls, it enhanced the security of the nation um, in a major way, and um, and I we agree that walls do work, and Secure America Now is committed to helping President Trump uh, get this wall built. And speaking of President Trump, he made promises when he ran that he was going to uh, dedicate the resources as well as the political resources, as well as mon monetary resources, to uh, securing our borders. Do you think that the president is sincere in trying to bring a halt to illegal immigration in this country? I I've gotten to meet with the president on many occasions. I've, I've been able to have um, several conversations with him. Um, I know that he is doing everything that he can uh, to give the Border Patrol the resources that we need in order to do our jobs, including building, um, building walls in strategic locations. Um, the problem that we face is the political gridlock uh, that there is today, and with Congress not funding um, those programs um, that, we, that we absolutely have to have. Um, what we've got to have is we have to have people in the United States that are constantly calling their, their congressional officials, letting them know what they think about border security. If we were to have an open and honest debate in the United States, the vast majority of American citizens would agree that the border needs to be secure. But because the mainstream media will not take up an honest debate 
on what is actually happening on the border, most Americans don't understand. And so my job and everybody else's job that wants to secure the border is to get that message out, get that word out, so that the president will have the support that he needs that will force Congress to give him the funding that he is trying to get. But I can personally tell you, he is doing everything in his power to try to secure the border. He's doing it because he wants to protect the American public and all those people that are living within our borders legally, um, and, and he does it because he cares about the people. Brandon, um, we agree with everything that you said. And in addition to this podcast and other initiatives that we have taken, uh, we, we at Secure America Now are interested in coming down to the border and actually film what is going on there and what the, the burden or the task of your agents are on a daily, on a minute by minute basis. And with your assistance, um, uh, we would love to come down and film a video and disseminate it and cover issues that the mainstream media is not covering. I greatly look forward to the time that we can go out on the border and show you everything um, with your film crew. I'm, I'm hopeful that we're going to be able to set something up in, um, in August um, so that we can get this done and we can um, get your viewers, your listeners, um, the knowledge that they need to make proper decisions on what needs to be done for border security. Um, we appreciate the work that you do. We appreciate the support. Um, that you give to our Border Patrol agents. Um, and and as, as we continue to get more and more support, we will, in fact, secure the border. I just, uh, in closing, I want to mention that also looking at your website, which I'll repeat the address, bpunion.org, I saw a story about a GoFundMe campaign for a Border Patrol agent, Jeff Miranda, who is suffering from a really nasty disease. And I know about it because it actually, a member of our family uh, have, was impacted. It's called ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease. And we're gonna be asking our supporters, our members, to uh, help support the Miranda family as they fight this extremely vicious disease. And, uh, and uh, I made a personal contribution, but I'm gonna ask others to do the same because as I said in the comment, uh, Jeff and the other Border Patrol agents have in fact uh, been defending us and now in their time of need, we should help defend them. That is so greatly appreciated, and I cannot tell you how much not only the family will appreciate that, but other Border Patrol agents will, will see what you're doing and, and the work that you're doing, and they will greatly appreciate it too. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Brandon, and I look forward not only uh, seeing you uh, when we film, although I'm not sure I'm volunteering going to Arizona <laughs> even this summer, but, uh, but sometime in the near future, um, I hope that when things break or there are initiatives that the members of Secure America now can support in Congress or in, on the state level, um, if you would give us some notice and we will uh, educate our people with your help. And this has been a very instructive conversation. And, one, and I just want to repeat that we appreciate what you're doing and what your agents are doing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alan. Thank you for listening to Code Red with Secure America Now. We are the largest national security digital platform in the nation, dedicated to bringing critical security issues to the forefront of the American debate. For more information, visit our website at www.secureamericanow.org.